Huskers Illustrated. Let's go get a pick and score. Yeah, it's so baby. Oh, two, three, four. Let's go play some ball. Are you ready? And now, here's your host, Chris Schmidt. Back with Huskers Illustrated HD. Time to talk defense for Nebraska 2011 spring football underway this weekend. And guys, Mike Babcock here in Babcock sitting in. You know what? Nebraska looks pretty stable defensively. Three anchors at each level of the defense. Jared Crick, the defensive tackle. Levante David, Mr. Tackler at middle linebacker. And then Alfonso Dennard, the Fonz, at the corner spot. How good can this defense be? Well, I think that's a funny question because every year they evidently keep getting better. The coaches keep claim, claiming it could be the best defense they've had. Um, I still think that's a pretty tall task. But um, they definitely have the anchors at each of those uh, those positions. And I think one thing that will be interesting to see is Carl Pelini is now uh, going to be more of a defensive coordinator role where he can roam around. Um, he, he joked that he's supposed to be calling the plays. That's the arrangement him and him and Bo have. We'll see if, if they stick to that. But uh, it gets him off the defensive line and a chance to really work with the entire defense. So I think that's going to be maybe the first step uh, for this defense. We touched on depth at quarterback last segment. How about the depth at linebacker when you have some guys coming back and a Sean Fisher and a Will Compton scheduled to be healthy this year? Well, yeah, I th and I think depth across the board on defense. I think that's another one of the things that Carl Pauline talked about is he was pretty sure that this was going to be the defense deepest defense they've had and and by depth you again you talk about competition and that's that's where it's important is that you've got guys and he's got young guys coming up come on off red shirts that are going to compete for playing time and somebody said well would they be competing for playing time backup positions he said no we expect them to come in and compete for starting jobs that's when you have good depth that's when it matters that's when it's important and and I think that's the thing so the linebacker yeah they they do I think up front they do. They've got guys that can comp compete in the secondary. They lost some guys, but they've got guys that can compete at that position. And so I think that's the thing that's going to make this defense uh, good. And it, it could be the reason that you could say, well, yeah, this could be potentially the best defense they've had in the, in the four years that uh, the staff's been together um, because of the depth, because of those guys. Because as you pointed out, they've got the signature players. And, and now, do you have enough competition at these other positions to, to fill in around them? Well, tongue-in-cheek comment here, but if this is the best defense ever that they've had under the Pelini brothers, if you're calling defensive plays, you just kind of say, well, let's see if this works on third and ten. <laughs> Do you have fun with it? They, sh they should be in pretty good shape. I think, uh, you know, ultimately we've seen that with this defense, they get better as the year goes on. They, you know, they might be a little loose early in the season, but by the, t by the time the end of the season rolls around, they can usually – tighten down those screws and pretty much get a team to do what they want. Well, Nebraska's defense arguably has carried the, the workload for this team the last two years, getting stronger, as you mentioned, as the season went on. The offense looks to be simplified and, and kind of pull their weight, and they've got a lot of weight to pull both sides of the ball along with special teams because, guys, the schedule is as, arguably as hard as it's been since the early 80s, Mike. Well, yeah, and the uncertainty going into the Big Ten. I mean, there's a whole different thing now, and that's one of the one of the elements that is has has sort of framed spring practice going into this thing. And it's one of the reasons that uh, Bo Pelini said, "Hey, you know, one of the reasons I haven't been too available since the bowl game is that I, we've actually been working. You know, it, um, you you have new members on staff, but you're also going into a new conference." And, and even though uh, there are going to be elements of the same, you know, teams are going to play, some teams are going to play the same way as, uh, as what, what Nebraska saw in the Big 12, obviously. But across the board, they're probably philosophically it's a little bit different offensively, for example. And so you've got to make some changes there, and, and you've got to adjust to that. So the coaches have been studying a little bit the Big Ten uh, uh, opponents, the Big Ten mentality. I think it's a little bit more of a rushing conference. Um, and, and, and so that, you know, that's another factor. And then you look at the con you look at the schedule, and and Nebraska as the new new guy on the block. You know they didn't uh, give them any breaks, obviously, because if you're coming into that conference as one of the branded teams, um, we're going to put you with the other branded teams. We're we're going to make it worth our while, you know, bringing you in here. So Nebraska has a has a killer conference schedule, and uh, and the newness of it is going to work to Nebraska's favor too. I mean Nebraska's new to the, these teams. But uh, Nebraska doesn't get too many breaks in that conference schedule. Aaron, you look at the schedule here. I mean, the non-conference looks pretty doable for Nebraska. Washington comes in and uh, a third time in 
a year and a half, Nebraska gets to hook up with the Huskies. Yeah, I think uh, we've pretty much got Washington figured out at this point. Doesn't, doesn't mean, as we saw in the Holiday Bowl, that it necessarily translates into a win. But, you know, Tennessee, Chattanooga, Fresno State, uh, you know, Washington, those are games that you need to win. Obviously, at Wyoming, uh, that's going to be a, a little crackerjack box out there with about 35,000 people, I think. But once you get into that uh, conference opener there in Madison, Wisconsin, uh, I think people are really going to start to... Uh, to, to see how difficult it's going to be to win that that division in the conference every year. And then, uh, uh, you know, obviously you've got Ohio State coming in, which obviously they've got their own issues, but there's no doubt about the talent they have. And then the end of that schedule, as Mike was saying, I mean, that is just cutthroat uh, at Penn State, at Michigan, and then uh, the, th the day after Thanksgiving game uh, against Iowa. Those that's going to be as tough as anybody's schedule uh, on the way out. Well, just looking at what's coming back from the Big Ten and the number of teams that could have landed in a BCS Bowl other than Ohio, uh, than Ohio State, Michigan State just missed because of points. Iowa, two years removed from an Orange Bowl trip. And you have up-and-comers with Minnesota, played well at the end of the year. Northwestern, a solid eight-win squad under Coach Fitzgerald. And then you never know with Penn State. I mean, Joe Paul could turn around and have another 11-1 season based on if those freshmen and sophomores that were kind of up and down the last two years put it together. And he's always dangerous for a 10-win season. So uh, uh, obviously a very difficult uh, initiation to the Big Ten fraternity. Let's talk about the day after Thanksgiving. Iowa Nebraska set to hook up, and that keeps the string alive of post-Thanksgiving football for Nebraska fans. Well, I think it's I think it's great that the, the determination would, was made that they would play that game on Friday. I think Nebraska Iowa, obviously, when you look at it going into the Big Ten, that's that's probably the game that everybody looks at. Really, um, it, it, it's it's going to be great to see uh, Ohio State come to Memorial Stadium, and it's going to be great to be you know to go to Michigan and to, to go to Penn State. And the, although the last time Nebraska went out there wasn't a particularly pleasant experience. <laughs> But, but uh, you know, I think the, the big thing is that Iowa game and the day after Thanksgiving couldn't, have been, couldn't be a better situation. I think that's going to be a great rivalry. Um, probably one that should have been played on an annual basis anyway, but I think both, both programs looked at it and said, you know, why would I make that one of my non-conference games when it, it, you're, in the, you're in the Big, t big Ten and you're Iowa, you know, why do you want Nebraska? Uh, as a non-conference game, and you're Nebraska, you're in the Big 12 trying to compete there. What do you want? To, what, what do you want Iowa every year? So now it's going to have an opportunity to do that. It's in the same conference. It's going to be great. Huskers Illustrated HD continues on. We'll touch on Husker hoops and where Nebraska's headed postseason time right after this.